Is it bog? Is that, can I say bog? Bog standard. So, so I'm currently standing here at a bog standard British supermarket that is a Sainsbury's, the local edition, uh, because this is a place where a large percentage of the British people are currently going to buy their groceries. And with the cost of inflation on the rise, with the cost of literally all goods going up more and more and more, I wanted to see what is the cost of an average shop at your local store in the UK and possibly compare it to how our friends across the pond in America are currently doing with their grocery shops. So without further ado, Let's get some food. All right, so I am finally back from Sainsbury's with a meal deal in hand, using, of course, a reusable bag from Morrison's because I care about the environment. So today we're going to be looking at, like I said, the difference in price between the standard groceries you can get in the UK versus the US. Having grown up in the US and spending, to this point, the majority of my life there, I'm pretty well aware of what prices things normally are. And from my experience, I always felt like it was always more expensive to just buy groceries than it was to get a takeaway or a delivery or something like that. But hey, depends on what you're getting. And I think the data will speak for itself pretty much. And if you are new here, hi, my name is Evan Edinger, an American born British YouTuber who likes making videos on interesting things. Also, he has a master's degree in actuarial science. I'm saying this because it explains my love for mathematics. Today's video is quite mathy. Let's dive on in. Also, if you like this style content, please be sure to give that subscribe button a little toggle. Anywho, so groceries. In order to make this as fair as possible, I looked at two different stores in the US and two different shops in the UK, trying to make it as uniform as possible. I also made sure that certain items were judged by the price per kilogram as opposed to just the price. So that way, of course, if something was 550 grams and something was 300 grams, we can actually see the overall cost per kilogram and see which one was more expensive. Also using Google Spreadsheets' automatic conversion algorithms, I was able to make an entire column just for Americans to understand everything in the dollar value and also everything in pounds for Brits. Now in the UK corner, we're looking at a Sainsbury's slash Tesco, because I believe these are pretty middle of the line shops. And also they're all over the entirety of the UK. In the US, we're looking at an Acme slash ShopRite. And if you're American going, I've never heard of those, I'm fairly certain there aren't any fully national grocery food chains in the States. There might have some that are like taking up a huge majority of the West Coast or East Coast, like Safeway or Trader Joe's and whatnot, but I'm using my Jersey heritage. So we're going with ShopRite and Acme. All right, I split this up into a couple different sections with the standard groceries. We got fruit and veg, and then we got some meats and other things like that. In the UK, you can expect to spend about one pound 20 for your standard loaf, no fancy, no seeds of bread. In the US, the equivalent cost in dollars is $3.84, or in pounds, that's £3.32, a 2.7 times increase over the cost of a single loaf of bread for the same equivalent grammage in the UK. <laughs> grammage. My grandma bought this loaf of bread and it was 2.7 times more expensive back in her day. Porridge oats or oatmeal, standard kilogram box of porridge oats is gonna cost you about one pound 95 in the UK. Get you a nice amount of porridge. In the US, that's four pound 71, the equivalent of $5.45 for a kilogram of oatmeal. Yet again, we're over two times more expensive for this standard grocery. Next up, we've got cornflakes. These exist in both countries. No crazy cereals. No, we're not talking about any like Jolly Ranch or Sour Patch Kids cereal in the US. Standard cornflakes in the UK, of course, if you want a big box of this terrible anti-masturbatory cereal, it's gonna cost you two pounds. It's pretty standard. It's cornflakes. You're not paying much for cornflakes. In the US, it is five pound 59. Six dollars and 46 cents for a box of cornflakes. Cornflakes. This is one of those that I, I was like, is it really that expensive? And then I remembered, yes, I love cereal growing up in the States and I always expected to pay about $4.50 for a small box or for the cornflakes, something like that size, about six bucks. So, whew, I just didn't realize how much I was really saving on groceries living in the UK, on basic things. Moving on, we got 500 grams of rice. This one was actually quite close, only 10% more expensive in the US. Still more expensive, but you know, not as bad. 1.26 times more expensive in the States for the equivalent amount of butter. Moving on to four pints of whole milk. And if you're wondering why I'm measuring four pints of whole milk, the UK is an absolutely batshit measuring thing in which they go somewhat metric and then they go back to imperial, but in a weird way where instead of just saying a gallon or quartz or something like that, they just go with four pints. Might as well just say eight cups. I don't know, half gallon, ring a bell anyone, two quarts, I don't know. Either way, so the equivalent amount of milk 
a standard thing that most people pick up during their grocery shop. We're looking at three pound 10 in the US. Yet again, more than double the UK amount of one pound 45. Switching over to dollars, that's the equivalent of paying $1.68 for a half gallon of milk. So far, we've not really seen any big W's coming out the US, but that's about to change with cheddar cheese. 550 grams, no. Actually, uh, very close though, only 16% more expensive in the States. So you could you could write that off as a little bit of variance. That's fine. A dozen medium eggs, two pound 30 for a standard dozen versus three pounds and two pence in the States. So for my standard dry good groceries, it looks like the UK is a resounding win with a significant decrease in the price of groceries. Now moving on to fresh fruit and veg. First up is an onion or rather onions per kilogram. Per kilogram, you're looking at 85 pence for a kilogram of onions. Of course, they're cheap onions. Except in the States, you're looking at an equivalent of three pounds and 79 pence. We're looking at 4.46 times the price, nearly four and a half times more money for a bag of onions. And it gets worse if you only want, want to buy a couple onions. I knew this because when I visited the States in February, I wanted to buy one onion for a dish and it cost a dollar for one onion. In the UK, that's the equivalent of buying a whole kilogram of them. It's, it's, it's crazy. And then finally, we get our first W, USA. We went on the tomatoes, okay? We got some vine fresh tomatoes. The US pays 17% less. Hell yes. Now, to be fair, this is a bit of an outlier because this is coming from a New Jersey location. And New Jersey is known for our Jersey fresh tomatoes, the best tomatoes you can get anywhere in the world. So you'd think because they're so incredibly good and delicious in the garden state, they'd be more expensive, but no, everyone's growing them. We got them all over the place. So congrats, we got cheaper tomatoes. Next up, pink lady apples, the creme de la crap. Yes, another win for the US. 2% cheaper, but we will take our W's. Now, bananas per kilogram are 78 pence in the UK. You can buy them for, at uh, this point, freaking 30 pence per, but I digress. For the US, it's not that bad. At one pound 12 is the equivalent amount, so only one and a half times more expensive. I'm saying only, but at this point, these are all starting to add up. And this one blew me away the most. A kilogram of carrots will set you back 45 pence, nearly 50 cents. However, in the US for that equivalent, you're paying one pound 88. Yet again, over four times the cost for carrots. And at this point, it's starting to get really freaky because the US, especially like California, has so many farms, huge swathes of land. We have so much more land. You could argue we have more people. And so therefore we have more demand. But I, for some reason, I feel like something else is afoot here as well. Like it, it just seems wild that all of this is more expensive, except of course, the Jersey Fresh and the apples. Next up, standard raisins. Standard bag of raisins are two times more expensive in the US. A cucumber, one and a half times more expensive. A same thing for a can of chopped tomatoes, one and a half times more expensive. A kilogram of potatoes, potatoes are so cheap. A, a kilogram bag is 83 pence in the UK. The US is three and a half times more expensive. We're looking at over $3 for a kilogram of potatoes. Lord have mercy. We did have two wins for this section of fresh fruit and veg, but now I think there might be a bit more perspective here on why there's so much processed foods in the US, because if you can believe it, a lot of those are a lot cheaper than buying all of these fresh vegetables. Just buy a box, add a couple things to it, Bon Appetit, you save a bit of money, not as good for you. And finally, our last section here is going to be the meat of the video. The meats. Going into this, I really expected the UK's to be more expensive for meats because God, is it expensive to buy standard mincemeat and chicken and such at the local stores. But mincemeat, holy crap. One pound 69 for the UK equivalent weight. Five pound 99, holy three and a half times for meat. I, wow. I don't know how much I'd eat meat if it was that expensive, to be honest with you. Chicken breast, 650 grams, 1.3 times more expensive in the US. Okay, that's not so bad considering mincemeat was that big. Smoked bacon, very close, very close. Nearly one to one, 250 versus 256. That can change depending on how far the pound has been dropping recently. So if we were to add all these up, the cost of your total grocery shop in the UK would be 48 pounds and 88 pence. Whereas the US equivalent is 88 pounds and 69 pence. Over a hundred dollars for a standard grocery shop. 
which blows me away. Back when I used to shop at Little all the time, I would marvel at how many things I'd shove in my cart and it would still come out to just about 20 quid. And I was like, hell yes. But Jesus, it, I just can't imagine a standard grocery shop being a hundred dollars. Of course, this is just a couple samples taken. It's not like a sample across all of the US and all of the UK. And sure, if you're always used to paying 1.8 times what the UK is, you're not necessarily going to notice as big a difference. You don't have anything to compare it to necessarily while you've always been in the US. But sales tax is also a thing in quite a few states. 13 states actually charge their citizens tax on basic groceries. Tennessee charges 4%. So that $100 shop has an extra $4 tacked on top that you aren't really probably budgeting for. And then that adds up every single shop. <laughs> what the, what? why have I just changed flannels? Oh, I must have changed my shirt location when I was changing my browsing location with today's video sponsor, NordVPN. Fun fact, I couldn't actually do this video if I didn't have NordVPN. Why? Well, I wanted to check the prices of different things in the New Jersey grocery store and it wouldn't let me because they were like, no, 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 no. Only Americans can see this data. So I went, excuse me, I use NordVPN.com slash Evan. Boom, now I'm in New Jersey and I can look and see, whoa, they charge way too much for an onion in this state. Ridiculous. But outside of incredibly niche things you wanna do, like looking at the prices of things in different countries, you can also open up an incredibly large library of content via Netflix or any other online media platform. Just change your browsing location and now you can watch She's the Man. I don't know why you wanna watch that, but you know, now you can on a different country's platform. And not even just that, NordVPN has your internet security absolutely covered, especially if you're going out there, traveling, going to cafes and using Wi-Fi's where it might not actually be the free Wi-Fi you think it is. It's a man in the middle attack, but with NordVPN, all of your data is encrypted in a lovely tunnel. Or hey, just make sure you check any of your hyperlinks that you're sent so you don't get fished using NordVPN's threat detection software. So if you want NordVPN, please sign up at my link in the description, nordvpn.com slash Evan, or use code Evan at checkout. You get a really good offer on a two-year plan and you get four months for free with me, okay? Don't tell anyone else, just for you and me. All right, thank you NordVPN for sponsoring. Without further ado, let's uh, switch back into my other clothes. Oh. Either way, data is data. You can extrapolate from it what you will. So tell me below what your thoughts are on this whole type of situation. Is your country a bit worse with this? I know for instance, Switzerland has it really bad when it comes to taxes and such. So maybe any Swiss people in the comments wanna chime in about what their standard grocery shop looks like. If these prices seem outlandish, if you convert to euros, tell me below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. You can subscribe and ring my bell to get new videos every Sunday in your feed on something interesting. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Goodbye. He makes a little videos about the US and the UK. If you subscribe to him, you'll see a new vid next Sunday. You're not actually talking about the US, you're talking about New Jersey. <laughs>